Hi, uh, welcome to the first of probably the only um, video diary thing. Um, it's the 1st of October, it's Dreadcon 6 is happening in, o in Oxford. Unfortunately, I'm here in Belfast drawing. Um, but good news is, sorry, I'll, I'll be zooming in and zooming out at random. The good news is, I'm currently drawing an episode of Judge Dredd. It's a four part, four, four, no that's three, four part dread, um, written by John Wagner, um, which is kind of, you know, it might as well finish it now, pack it all in, four part dread by Wagner for the magazine, which means it's 48 pages, which means it's kind of equivalent to, what, an eight parter in, in 2008. So anyway, uh, I'm currently drawing page 10, uh, of the first episode uh, that says 1st October so you're not going to see this I won't be putting this online until um, the episode actually hits so so there um, so I'll take you through the page as it exists right now okay this is page one I'll zoom in on pal one Whee. there you go panel one as you can see it's about I don't know, 50, 80% complete, just needs a wee bit of inking done. So I'll take you through that. Uh, next panel, panel 2, good old tough one of dread, looking tough and moody and stuff. Camera's going a bit mad because it's trying to zoom in. Uh, and then panel 3, uh, which would be a cool pan across, let's see. Ooh, do, 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 do. Big dude reading a map with dread. Uh, they're in a, a dense, dense jungle, and see this area here without background. That's all going to be scrumbled up with uh, scribbly lines to make it look like trees and stuff. That's one of the tricks of the trade. Uh, zoom out, and you'll see this last panel. Not a great dig uh, in there. I will be detailing that all up as best I can. So anyway, let's get started on the one thing. Well, let's no, let's do this here. We'll do this first. I'm at two minds whether to do like a commentary on this. Um, it's. What I'm going to do is, you see, the thing is, when you're doing stuff like this, you don't really need to worry so much about the uh, pencil in it. And pencil, blah, 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 blah. Trees, 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 trees. Jungle, jungle. Bit of that thing there. Trees, 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 trees. So now I'm just going to scuffle it. I think I'll do it with a, a brush. I use this stuff here. Like that. I'll use. Uh, this magical, this magical stuff here. That's Windsor Newton Black Indian Ink, which is great stuff. Unfortunately, Bradbury Graphics, who normally sell it for me, are uh, don't have it anymore. Don't have any of it in stock at the moment. I mean, these things. Uh, what are they? These things here. We. What's awful hard to do this? Uh, these are. Brushes, obviously. Um, sapphire, something or other brushes. But these are my choice of trade. And you'll see on the, over here, let me adjust the camera. That's it. This is the process of inking that I go through. So it's just a matter of getting apologize for rubbish in here. Uh, I usually scrum a bit of ink onto my brush. It's too much fudge sure. And then I will once I've done that I'll then scrape some of it off and then get a wee bit more on and just rotate it around until it's nice and thin ish. And then I can start. So, 
Um, okay, I've just drawn fol foliage, which kind of involves me just zoning out a bit and doing this kind of thing. Although, what I should be doing is leaving a silhouette around, or not a silhouette, a, a little bit of white line around Dred's head so we can see him compared to the background. Um, and it looks a bit unnatural when you do it that way, so I might um, actually use a bit of white out, use white acrylics to bring that in a bit. This is thrilling stuff, isn't it? I'm sure there's really excited. Um, why do I keep doing this? I don't know. This is PJPV. The first time I had a computer with a video camera. Actually, here's why I'm doing this. I'm doing this because my wife and child are off at my mother-in-law's for the day and night. So I have nothing else to do. So I'm sitting here, drawing this here. Uh, while everyone's away at Dreadcon, I've cried off all comic conventions this year. Um, mostly because I just can't be bothered trying to think of them and they all cost a lot of money and you know they, these things just add up um, and I do I do love going to them I always feel kind of once I come back I always feel oh this is great I could draw forever and ever and ever although I never do I always just come back and sit and stew a bit wondering why I'm rubbish um, <laughs> I'm wondering if she'd have some music. Um, okay. Actually, I don't need to worry about jutting into this here thing. So, in fact, I want to jut into this wee thing because then um, it falls into the background, and we don't really care about it so much. Um, can I take you through some of my thoughts here on this this big panel? This is a panning panel, or a panel that I like to think of as a long panel. I like to think of any panel that's kind of quite long as being a um, panel that you would pan across uh, like a camera would. So, um, and I think often it tends to be a slow pan, unless you've got speed lines or something on it. The more detail you've got on it, the slower the pan. So, um, you know, this is imagining you you if you were the camera you'd come from uh left to right like that there. Woo. Um and that would be kinda cool. It's all a bit screwy because I'm trying to keep an eye on what the camera's seeing by looking in a mirror, which means everything I look at is reversed. So it's just a bit weird. Um you know, so yeah, I rotate the camera, the, the page a lot when I'm doing this. It's mostly because I'm a messy pup and I tend to get sticky yeah, ink in my fingers. And when I do that, I tend to smudge everything I get up. So this way, if I keep moving it, I keep moving it until it's at a dry bit. Um, it'll all be good. I think I'm going to have to put music or something over the sound of this because... Who wants to listen to me? What have I got to talk about? I don't know. Um, right, Dreadcon. First comic convention I went to was Bristol oh, quite a number of years ago. It was very odd. Um, only because I'd never been to a comic convention before. To tell you the truth, I don't really like travelling. Well, I don't mind travelling. I have to enter as like, a weird zen-like state, so I don't worry about it. But I have a tendency to have kind of disastrous travel moments. Um, which have always kind of put me off going anywhere or doing anything terribly exciting but um, you go to enough conventions you kind of get inured to it and you have used that word twice today I'm not even sure what it means I think it means used to it but I don't know but then why don't I just say used to it I don't know I, I, I like new words um, I like big butts and again I like. so anyway the insanity of drawing is that you constantly pepper your conversation with in in all of these. No, you don't. I don't know what I'm talking about. Just ignore me. Just look at the work happening. Is this any better? I wonder than doing it. Speedy cam view. Probably. Let's get then this here a little bit. Right like now, we made a slight mistake in it because I've inked. Because I've inked this, it's all wet, which means I can't really ink this because my hand will get inky. No, no, it's dry. Uh, it's all dry. Uh, oh, I love the brush. 
brush is great. Um, if you're not using a brush, reasons why you should consider it, okay? Uh, it's possibly the most flexible of the drawing implements. So you can, um, if you're using a brush, you can do what? You can, um, you can do almost anything with it. You can draw straight lines, you can draw curves, you can draw, uh, clothing, rocks, absolutely any shape can be done. Um, John McRae, who I'm often quoting, because, um, you know, I only know a couple of famous people, and he's one of them, which is a very, very sad reflection on both me and Joe, I think. Um, and oh, I do this a lot too, you'll find that I tend to work through a, pa a piece of a panel. Um, I will often pencil while I'm inking, while I'm penciling, while I'm inking. So, a page is not really kind of, for me, uh, I don't do it all in one go and then finish and then I'm away and just work, work away um, and hope for the best. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. That's the drawing I'm talking about, not, not what I'm saying. What I'm saying inevitably it doesn't make sense, but... I sort of hope sometimes that the drawing does. If I feel... I'm hoping Dylan's going to watch this. Because he is a phenomenally good inker. And a really great little artist. But bloody hell, it's hard to get him to do anything fast. So, I'm hoping you look at it and go, Oh, I could do that much better. And then go and do it. Because Dylan, if you're listening to this, uh, I got sent out Shimura, um, and I was flitting through the pages, and the, easily the nicest thing in it, although whether that's because they, they um, uh, whether that's because the, the reprinting from the other art wasn't that great, but one of the nicest things in it was definitely Dylan's piece. It's just a shame he doesn't do more. Now, this is all black. This bit here is all black, but it's going to be really dull. So, what I might do is give it a wee bit of texture, and that's really just to keep the eye interested. Um, I think I'm fond of quoting is, is uh, what do you call him, uh, Dave Gibbons saying once, I was at a, comic, well, a convention down south and Dave Gibbons was doing a drawing and lots of people said, oh that's lovely, and it was a, he was doing the lacing on Martha Washington's boots. And he said, oh yes, the eye loves detail. doesn't matter if it's real or if it's important or anything, but the eye loves detail. So, uh, which I, I kind of think is why, I mean, to me, when you're... Oh, right, you're looking at a big blank area. My apologies. Oh. Um, yes, this is going to happen, really. You know, I, I, it's very, very difficult to get this whole thing lined up properly, so... Inevitably, you're going to face strange blank areas if you want to do this. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, I better I'll bleep out the swearing and the bad words later, because my little brother might watch this. Ah, here we go. Alright, sorry. Ugh. Okay. I'm just, um... Oh, what was that? Rambly, rambly, rambly. Um, yeah, same texture in this, but uh, I kind of think if you're doing, when you're doing comics, silhouettes read very, very quickly, and they're a great way to speed things up, and um, detail slows the eye down, and that's a brilliant way to slow the moment down for for the reader. So it doesn't have to be really de detailed, or, you know, it doesn't have to be a real thing, it just needs to be small and kind of deliberate and cool. Um, this must be like watching paint or not. <laughs> Ink dry. I, I apologise. You don't have to watch it. Go and watch some TV or something. I'll give you a shout if I'm doing anything interesting. Just keep it running in the background. I'll shout you if I do anything that's remotely exciting or or different or unique. Um, my good friend Jim was around earlier on, and Jim is a brilliant cartoonist, but fundamentally he, he just doesn't 
he just doesn't draw comics and he so I think he sort of wants to but he just seems to have a mental block of not doing it and you kind of I mean I, I do as well it's very easy to it's incredibly easy just to not draw you just sit there thinking oh it's so hard to draw it's so hard to draw but then when you're actually doing it it's not so bad it's kind of you know it's easy-ish I think it's a lot easier than you think it's going to be uh, but it's that blank area of paper it's just the most frightening thing seeing a big blank area and going oh it's going to be there on the other hand, one of the best things about drawing comics is that whenever you go away and come back to it, you have, or whenever you start it, you have a blank area, and whenever you finish it, you have a completed page that was never there before. You have a pocket universe, as it were. Um, I was recently offered a substantial amount of money, about three grand, for a month's worth of work, and I kind of grabbed it thinking this will be it this is the end of comics and thinking i might go into programming and this this will do and then at, shortly after that i was offered a substantial amount of money for doing dread and i just thought to myself do you know if it comes to the crunch when i'm 90 and i look back on my life i would like to have done lots and lots and lots and lots of drawing and i wouldn't really be that bothered whether i've never done any programming or web stuff or computery work um, and I do say that a lot I mean I've said it every time someone significant has died in my life I've kind of gone oh that'll you see what I should be doing here is drawing I shouldn't be doing anything but what I want to do and then you, you do that for a wee while and then after a while you just kind of you just slip back into your old habits and you know doing what's normal and apologies for this being sideways it's just if I turned the camera the other way I would be in the way of the camera, so you, you know, I'll figure out something. I'm sure. Um, I'm not even sure how long this recording is so far. Hmm, Seventeen minutes. Okay. So what I'm doing now is I'm drawing the floor of this um, tent thing these guys are in. Um, I say you'll not see this until this is issue. Uh, this is out. So um, I'm hoping that it'll be coloured brilliantly. Uh, I've been extraordinarily lucky with colouring, um, although you know I'm, I'm not overly fussy. I think the only job that was particularly bad, and I don't blame the colourist in any way, um, is when I did a uh, skeleton key, which was just not very good. In fact, it's awful, artwork wise certainly. Um, I've done some stinkers. I think every artist has done some stinkers, and most of them I've done them at the start of their career, and who's to say I'm not going to do loads more? I do not know. Um, but every job I've done for 2080 has certainly been rescued by the colour. Um, although obviously Road Trooper wasn't wasn't rescued by the colour, although it was rescued by the grayscale. I'll, I'll let you into a wee secret on that. That grayscale took no time at all to do. Um, and the only reason I stopped doing it was because I got bored of it. But it, it literally... Um, you would do your page and you think oh, it looks alright and then you would go and get your uh, ink and do a bit of grey wash on it and suddenly the quality would leap uh, just because of the grey on the page it, I always thought it was a little minor miracle, it was great I'm kind of proud of the fact that I think I might have been one of the first ones to do that in 2008 in the modern era which is kind of cool um, Although, having said that, loads of people were doing it in, in Warhammer. Um, and actually, the first the first time I used that technique was on a strip called the Seven, um, which was for Warhammer, and easily now still rated as my best piece of work, but sadly, never saw the light of day. Um, so, you know, that's what happens sometimes. So here's where I'm going to hope that the colorist will get the gist of what I'm trying to do here. Um, these guys are in the tent and hopefully whenever I do this it will pop them further into the background. It's hard to tell. Um,
don't forget this is about the same, well this is the size it's drawn at, it'll be about half that size when it's when it's all um, printed. And so the details will increase. Now, the question is, how do I deal with this little bit here with the flap of the thing? So I think I'll just do that. If I do this, you come down like that. Right there. You'll, you'll notice that quite a lot of what I'm drawing here doesn't exist on the page. Um, I'm very, very lazy, I think is the answer to that one. If that was a question, which it wasn't, but... I don't know, I view comics as a form of commercial artwork. Um, commercial artwork can be beautiful. I think. Uh, Norman Rockwell did commercial artwork, uh, I know Alphonse Mucha did commercial artwork, and these guys all did beautiful, beautiful artwork. But it's commercial, which means you've got to be able to do it fast and stuff. And I think what I'll do is I'll, this bottom bit here, I'm going to solid black, solid black, and then kind of grey, make it look like a wee bit of reflected light coming off the ground. Um, again, this is just to slow your eye down, so you take, take your time reading this scene. Not for any other reason, really. It's all about leading the eye, I think, when you're doing this stuff. So anyway, I wish I had questions or something to answer, or telephone calls. But, you know. Um, or even something worth saying. So, I might do another one. Um, Another video thing. Depends. Uh, I say my wife is away at the moment, so I have time to do one right now. When I'll get the time again, I don't know. My little son is away with her, so maybe some time before I can do this again. Or I might never do one again. <laughs> See, you thought I'd keep talking, didn't you? I know I did. But now I've exhausted my things that I might want to say. Oh, Small X2 is out. Um, and you know, it, it, Belfast in Northern Ireland seems to have a surprisingly um, active small press scene, which is really kind of cool. Uh, it's sad that I sort of have no involvement in it, but I never really did anyway. I couldn't find anyone who was doing it. I almost frequented the wrong places or something. I just couldn't find the buggers. Um, certainly, Northern Ireland has small acts. I know. Uh, Richmond Clemens is um, doing Future Quake. I don't know. Is he? I think he's doing it all, isn't he? I don't, I don't know. But Rich is doing Future Quake or is involved in it in some sense, some way. Um, does that make Future Quake Northern Ireland? Uh, I don't don't know. And there's a whole bunch of people from on the 2008 border from Belfast. Well, wow. two or three. Certainly more than I ever th expected to see. I don't know. You kind of wonder why these people don't all know each other. I used to think that I, you know, you kind of, when you're isolated, as you often are when you're drawing comics, you just start thinking you're on your own, totally. But it's nice to know there's other people out there doing comics. Um, the extent of my small scene, or comic knowledge, was when I knew uh, Fred and John. Uh, and some of the other people, Sean Doran and um, John Farley, Patrick Brown, and people like that, but they've all sort of dropped by the wayside or moved on to other things or whatever it is that grown ups end up doing inevitably with their lives. Um, 
I mean, the problem is that ground looks like tarpaulin or something, but sure. Now this, this panel here, which I've finished, is essentially a panel where Dredd is examining the troops, as it were, and thinking to himself and going, you know, what have I promised these boys and should I be doing this? Is this the right thing to do and all that stuff? Um, and I um, was going to, I was considering drawing it with Dredd, with seeing the guys that Dredd was talking about and with Dredd looking at them, but to be honest with you, I have done so far dozens of pages with the back of Dredd's head in it and you know I think it's a little unfair, it's a little unfair to the reader because the reader wants to see Dredd. One of the things I learnt on doing um, Nanas and Custard was to always keep the, the main characters facing the reader, if iffy looking, um, always keep the main characters facing the reader uh, and in the, in the same way that if you're doing any like stage acting, you, you're always you, you're careful not to cross over in front of anyone, and you're always facing forward when you even whenever it's two people talking, you don't talk face to face, you talk face out as if you're you're talking to the audience. Now you'll see a bit of a correction going on here. Um, you do that because the audience expect to see you, and it's an artificial thing anyway, acting. Stage actor, um, I don't expect realism. So the problem is that I have lots and lots of the back of Dred's head when he's talking to people because it's the only way to get that to, to be realistic. Um, and not it. Most of the ink is dry. Certainly this ink has. I'll rub it out, have a look, and consider my next move, as it were. Um, here we go. That ah, looks alright, doesn't it? Yeah, what will happen hopefully is that these figures here, maybe this will be bright and these guys will be darkened out because they're closer. Something like that. But anyway, the colorist will figure out something because he's a clever guy, whoever he is. Or a clever girl, whoever she is. Um, so anyway, so I kind of considered it and I thought, well, what am I going to do here? And I thought, you know what? Uh, people like to see the Dread money shot. They like to see Dread. And they like to see Dread face in front. I like to see, you know, the best panels to me are always the ones where you see Dread kind of looking out towards you. Now I'm not, you know, I wouldn't say I'm by any stretch of the imagination a classic Dread artist, but um, where possible I bow to uh, the norms of the, the, the conventions as created by other 2080 artists. I'm using a wee bit of this stuff. It's a wee bit flaky now actually. Acrylic white ink as rec or acrylic artist's ink as recommended by Jock. Um and it's superb stuff. It kind of basically lets you paint white ink over everything. It's starting to get worse now. So I paint out that guy's teeth because they look awful. They look a bit like his lower lip or something. Uh, maybe add a wee bit of scarring in white. Um, certainly do a wee bit of this. If you've ever seen any original artwork uh, inked by Mark Farmer, you'll notice he uses huge amounts of this stuff to tidy up the, the line work. You know, you'll often see a slightly li a line slightly too thick that's been tidied up, or a line that's slightly too wavery that's been tidied up. Um, and you know what? If it's good enough for Mark Farmer, it's uh, good enough for me. So we'll also use it to kind of thin down some shading a bit, um, and to pop heels a wee bit more. So let's see.
Also, and if I'm being brutally honest about this, better chance you'll sell a page with dread facing forward on it. <laughs> Little known secret. He says one of the, I berated Boo Cook at last year's uh, Dread Con because he had done, he just done a Dread. I think it was his first real Dread script. Uh, it was called Underground by Gordon, Gordon Rennie. Um, and I kind of said to him, "Are you crazy? Because what you've done there is you've drawn Dread, your first full length Dread, and really you've drawn Dread and not a single page as he got his proper uniform on. He's got a double." Um, double fat elbow pads these things um, because he's wearing some sort of bacterial suit or something I don't know what it is um, which just seemed it was cool like but it was just you know if you're going to try and sell a dread page it's going to be a lot harder when dread isn't wearing his uniform it's also good if you can get the badge in I'm convinced although having said that I haven't the number of pages I've sold have been so pathetic um, I'm not even sure if I want to sell my artwork. I haven't done enough of it, really. And the price of artwork is wonderfully low if you're a buyer and horribly low if you're a seller. Um, right. That's most of that page, or that, that top half done. Let's talk you through some pencilling then, my friend. You'll note here I've got a big stinky black mark there where I've screwed up. That's alright though, because that's going to be bushes and trees, so it's lots and lots of black again. Pencil. My lovely pen. My lovely horse. Um, these are quite dear. I've two, I've two of them. And I use typically a 2H uh, lead. Actually, I'm going to take. It's 32 minutes. Do you know what? I'll pencil another day. Uh, rah, there you go, you weren't expecting that. Hang on. You can get a nice shot of my lovely curtains there. Ooh, zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. Okay. Um, thanks for joining me for half an hour at my drawing table. I will zip do something with the file and put it away and get ready for whatever. Alright, bye. Thanks for watching.